Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a red black mid range deck featuring a couple new cards from March of the Machine, namely Chandra, Hope's Beacon, alongside Breach the Multiverse. So Chandra doubles the first instant or sorcery we cast each turn, then the plus two adds two mana. The plus one can exile the top five cards of our library, and until the end of our next turn, we may cast an instant or sorcery spell from among them. And then the minus X can stabilize the board right away, dealing X damage to each of up to two targets. So you can potentially take out two creatures, maybe a creature in a planeswalker, and can also always deal damage upstairs to maybe finish off an opponent. So Chandra is incredibly powerful, especially when paired with a Invoke Despair, getting to copy Invoke Despair is often gonna win at the game on the spot. And then we also have, as we mentioned, Breach the Multiverse as something exciting to try and copy with Chandra, where each player mills 10 cards, and then for each player, choose a creature or planeswalker card in that player's graveyard and put those cards onto the battlefield under your control, and each creature you control also becomes a Phyrexian, not too relevant in this deck. But yeah, Breach the Multiverse copied with Chandra can potentially put multiple creatures from the opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield. We also have a couple creatures ourselves, but mainly Breach is here to get back Chandra from the graveyard in the first first place if the opponent managed to answer it, or if we maybe discarded Chandra earlier in the game. And then our creatures include two copies of Blood Tithe Harvester, which of course has excellent synergy with our Fable of the Mirror Breaker, still in standard, we'll see for how long. And then Fable provides us with a bit of card selection, and the treasure tokens from the Shaman can also help us ramp into an early Invoke Despair or Chandra. And then Chandra also has excellent synergy with Big Score, because she'll copy the first instant or sorcery we cast in any player's turn, so we can Big Score at instant speed during the opponent's turn, and then still copy it, getting to draw four cards, and making a four treasure tokens, so it pays for itself and generates a ton of card advantage, but we can always big score in our own turn if necessary. And then uh, rounding out the deck, we've got lots of cheap removal, which we can also potentially copy with Chandra if we decide to just add mana and then uh, cast a removal spell afterwards. That way we keep our loyalty high. We've got four copies of Cutdown, excellent against the aggressive decks in the format. Can even take out a Rafine at three mana, which is pretty important too. At two mana, we've got Go for the Throat as a removal of choice, alongside two copies of Shieldred's Edict. Can also be an answer to opposing Chandras and other Planeswalkers. Can sacrifice both non-tokens as well as tokens, so can also answer a Shieldred if that's the only creature on the battlefield alongside Go for the Throat. And speaking of Shieldred, we can also answer it with Nahiri's Warcrafting, dealing five damage to a creature, Planeswalker, or or battle, and if we deal excess damage, then the Warcrafting can generate additional card advantage. Can also be very fun to copy with Chandra, although being a 3 mana sorcery means if we tap out for Chandra, we can't make enough mana to cast a Warcrafting afterwards, so that's why the 2 mana instants are much more important. Then we've got Harvester, which can also crew Reckoner Bankbuster. We've got a split of two of each. Bankbuster, of course, great in the grindier matchups. Harvester much better in the aggro matchups. And then against other mid-range decks, sometimes Harvester is a little awkward, since our deck is very creature light, so then we just give the opponent a target for removal, whereas if our game plan works out, we can easily win the game without ever casting a single creature. And then, as we mentioned, we've got Fable and then Brotherhood's End as another sweeper to catch us back up against creature decks, but can also destroy artifacts, so it can be an answer to an opposing bankbuster or a bunch of treasure tokens. And then our mana base has 25 lands total, since we don't really want to miss any land drops with this deck, and we can always discard excess lands with Big Score or Fable, or maybe some of the blood tokens as well. And then we also can't afford to play too many mountains, because we need Quadruple Black for Invoke Despair, so if we draw too many mountains we won't be able to cast it on curve. So just a one mountain and then Crucible as an extra utility land. And then Abandoned Mire, also a way to get back Chandra from the graveyard. Eight swamps, and then a ton of red-black dual lands, starting with the best ones here, Haunted Ridge and the Springs in this deck, I would argue. Then Cliffs can be a bit awkward in a more controlling deck where it enters stabbed later in the game, but still a nice way of fixing our mana early. And then finally two copies of Bloodfell Caves, which I'm playing over some of the other dual land options. Could play the Cycling Lands for more card draw, or even the Station that we can sacrifice. But Caves gains one life when it enters, which is nice again some more aggressive decks, since our deck is already pretty good in the late game, so just want to shore up our aggro matchups a bit more. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Cut down into Bangbuster into Fable. 
and then maybe a big score to ramp into bigger things. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn one island. So it might be a mono blue deck. So resolving a bankbuster early could be great. Go for the throat and answer to the opponent's various creatures, and there's a consider. So could try and cast Fable, could just draw with a Bankbuster. I think I just draw with Bankbuster, even though that gives the opponent the opportunity to play a cantrip here instead. But um, yeah, if we can hit our land drops with Bankbuster, we can cast Big Score at instant speed, which makes it a bit more awkward for the opponent to keep up a counter spell. Alright, found our land. So now we can pass, and we've got a few different options available. Big score, potentially discarding cutdowns, fine, since cutdowns not going to be able to answer any of the opponent's creatures, unless they play a one-powered Haughty Djinn. And then if they counter big score, I can maybe resolve Fable, especially if I hit a land drop to pay for Make Disappear. But not let it resolve. Alright, so now we've got a bit more mana to work with. And uh, sure, we can just pass, or we can cast Fable and pay for Make Disappear pretty easily. And then still draw with Bankbuster. Opponent goes digging. Could see a Fading Hope here on the Shaman, just another Consider instead. So the danger here is your opponent being able to play Haughty Jin and then protecting it with various either counter spells or cards like Slip Out the Back. And that can certainly cause some issues. So, I don't know if I want to go for the throat now or in my turn when I have more mana to pay for conditional counter spells. Invoke Despair, also a pretty clean solution here. So maybe we bait out a response with go for the throat and then go for invoke despair. A breach at seven mana is not going to be the easiest to resolve. So that might have to go. There's no creatures in graveyard yet either. So a land and breach can go. All right. So uh, how about we go for the throat hardy gen, see what the response is, and then maybe go for invoke despair afterwards. That sounds good. So, step one. Opponent negates, so they still have potentially two mana available with the Haughty Djinn here. Could go for another go for the throat, and then if they counter I can still technically attack and then invoke despair, or I can attack first, see if they block. They may not, fearing a burn spell. Or I could go for the throat now. Yeah, I guess we'll go for it now. Although now if they counter, they're definitely going to block, but then they would be tapped out and we get to invoke despair, which is probably good enough. Alright, march to phase out, so that's fine. So now invoke despair would not kill Haughty Jin, so we can just pass and draw with a bankbuster once again. That's the advantage of going Invoke first, and then if they phase out, we can kill Haughty Jin at instant speed. But so it goes. Okay, second Haughty Jin is scary. So the game's sort of unfolding like I feared. So crew bankbuster and then attack with probably both creatures. Or I can keep the shaman back to have something to copy with reflection, which is also fair. Opponent takes it. And uh, sure, I guess we'll uh, 
invoke the spare, see what happens, and then I can still big score. Opponent with a flow of knowledge in response, so they won't counter this, but they will get to draw a ton of cards. And then ideally we find another removal spell for Hadijin with uh, Invoke here. Just a Crucible and a Cliffs. So let's main phase big score, discarding Cliffs. And then maybe find another go for the throat here. Alright, just all lands. That's painful. So Abandon Mire doesn't have anything to get back unless we randomly mill something useful. And our opponent with another flow of knowledge. So opponent's got the late game covered here if they can survive the next turn or two. And it seems like they will, given our current situation. Even discarding a Fading Hope. So they must have more in hand. Impulse, so they might actually just win the game right now. If they can cast a few more cantrips and fill the graveyard. Up to 10 power. Consider could be plus 2 power. So even another consider wouldn't quite do it. Gets rid of a hottie gin. So yeah, if we actually had a decent hand, we could have probably taken out hottie gin next turn or threaten lethal. Not quite the case now. Well, let's just untap. And if they have another blue march here, they can easily cast it for one mana to get rid of multiple cards at once. Go for the throat, a little bit late to the party. So I guess now the plan is to wait for the opponent to cast a blue march, and then go for the throat haughty gin. So I need to be able to threaten lethal for that plan to work. So with crucible, you can still crew bankbuster. So yeah, I guess that would be just enough here. So I could copy the uh, Shaman token. So time for the Blue March. Nope, just a Fading Hope on Bankbuster. Okay, that's not too bad actually. So now I can go for the throats, maybe after they scry, and then replay Bankbuster to draw. And now we're not in immediate danger of dying. Okay, pass it back. Pun probably has a few Tolarian Terrors they can play here. Another Hot Gen. I think that's the last one now. And an Impulse to go digging. Definitely gonna sack some treasures to draw with Bankbuster. There's still the danger of a blue march here, which could save the opponent for sure. So we probably still need to draw something useful. Cut down is not it. And a Brotherhood's End also doesn't really help. So maybe start by channeling Abandoned Mire, see what we hit. If anything. Okay, found a Harvester, so now I can copy Harvester with a Reflection. Which can also threaten to take out Hottigen. And I can crew the Bank Buster with a Summoning Sick Harvester, if they try and bounce it here. So now if they go for a Blue March, Bank Buster is not a creature yet. And then I'll be able to crew Bank Buster in response. So our opponent's going through the motions here. Alright, but they still have some mana left over, so... Could still easily be dead. I guess I could also crew with the pilot, doesn't really matter. Alright, so let's attack for four and hopefully force a trade at least. 
Okay, that seemed to work so far. So we're still alive. And then gain one life and pass a turn, maybe planning to sack the blood token, we'll see. That was a close one. If we hadn't milled over Harvester, we probably would have lost that game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn to Harvester, missing a 3-drop. And then big score into Invoke. Opponent also red-black. So, probably fine to play the Abandoned Mire so we don't take any unnecessary damage. Can always use the Blood Token. Just play another Tapped Caves instead now. And an Infernal Grasp at least nuts us to damage. Which could add up once we start casting Invoke Despair. Opponent's got to Fable on three. So we're a bit behind here. Do I discard a big score to maybe find a cut down here? Sure. Cliffs instead we can discard and a go for the throat. So I could big score and then still cast a go for the throat afterwards. Since I'll have the mana for an invoke despair regardless. And maybe we'll find a cut down we can use instead to keep go for the throat for shieldred. Alright, so we'll have to see here if we want to go for the throw to Shaman, or if our opponent runs out a main phase shielder that I can take out instead. Although even then I would probably still be better off denying the treasure as opposed to preventing two damage. So, let's just take out the Shaman. And then we're crafting another answer to Shieldred potentially. Invoke will clean up the Fable. And there's Shieldred, alright. This Invoke lines up quite nicely. And a Chandra could be a great follow-up, especially with an untapped land. Opponent passes. Just gonna play Fable. And then set up our Chandra next turn. Opponent with two mountains, it's possible they have an Invoke in hand and are unable to cast it since they are missing quadruple black. Possible they're just not running it if they have three basic mountains. So Cliffs can certainly go, and uh, that's maybe it. Could also dig towards another big score or Invoke Despair to combine with Chandra and get rid of a Go for the Throat here for instance. Warcrafting a bit more flexible since it can damage Planeswalkers as well. Bangbuster is nice. So get in for two. The Shaman's gonna eat a removal spell. Pyre could indicate that our opponent's on a reanimator deck as well. So that's a concern. So now could play Chandra, Ant Mana, still play a Bankbuster. Could wait for the opponent to present a creature that we can take out with Chandra to get immediate value. I think it's reasonable to play Chandra and then just run out the Bangbuster with the extra mana. Time to light up the but if our opponent has like a Shieldred's Edict and then an Abrade for Bangbuster, we're not going to be left with much. And yeah, there's Edict. That's the downside of not waiting for Chandra to line up better with the Minus ability. But if it survived, then I uh, could have potentially won the game very quickly. Cut down answer as a shaman. Could also warcrafting to dig for another action spell. Although I would be unable to cast, let's say, an invoke despair that I exile, since I would only have four mana left over. So maybe it's better to wait on the warcrafting until the reflection shows up. And then for now, draw with Bankbuster. And cut down the Shaman. So it's still anyone's game, but uh, Bankbuster's gonna slowly pull us ahead. Yep, 
there's Altraxa, so yeah, Pwn is definitely on the reanimation plane. And if they find the cruelty of Gix, that Altraxa is a very big problem. Don't have Graveyard Trespasser to exile it. So now maybe Warcrafting, and then we could hit an Invoke Despair to still cast. Opponent could also cut down their own token to prevent us from digging, but yeah, that's unlikely when we have a Reflection in play. Found the Invoke Despair, so we can cast it here. And we'll see which Fable they decide to keep. Might be the one on a single counter, since they still want to discard and draw. And yep, that's what they do. Go for the throw at least an answer to Atraxa if they bring it back. But, uh, but it's still pretty far from dead. Edict deals with Reflection. So yeah, big top decks coming up. Cruelty of Gix will turn the game around for the opponents. They only discarded to one card here, so that's not a great sign. All right, never mind. Big score discarding cutdown, so they kept a big score with a fable and now a harvester. That one we can answer. But the clock is ticking, and sooner or later, opponent will find a cruelty of gigs. At least we're getting to the point where we can cast a Chandra and then cast an Invoke Despair in the same turn. Blood token discards, cutdown's gone. And another Harvester. So I'll hang on to go for the Throat in case I top deck Chandra, so I can kill both creatures with the ability. Or by copying go for the Throat, of course. And there's Chandra. Okay, big decision. So we can Chandra and then just minus two, get immediate value, that's maybe the safest play. And then hang on to go for throw to potentially answer Atraxa. And then I can still draw with a Bang Buster too. No more watching. It's time to do something. And is there any reason to draw now? I guess I could top deck a Harvester that I can still cast, but there's not many left, so let's just pass. So if Chandra can stick around, we can start digging for another Invoke Despair. So we may be able to beat a Cruelty of Gix now. Blood Token discards. And our opponent's about halfway through the deck. And a Brotherhood's End can finish off my Chandra, unfortunately. Okay. So we'll get to make our pilot end of turn to Crew Bankbuster. And our points on empty. Our draws haven't been incredibly exciting. But still multiple Invoke Despairs left in the deck. Of course, Breach the Multiverse at this point is amazing, stealing the opponent's Atraxa and putting a Chandra in play. So we've got some good top decks ourselves. Station's gonna draw. Definitely looks better than our Caves in this matchup, but Caves can have its moments against the Red Aggro matchup. And alright, opponent concedes, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This is a bit of a rough one with Double Breach and a Chandra, too many expensive spells. And this is better. So we'll keep, and then a land can go. Gain a life of Bloodfell Caves. Turn 2 Cliffs, turn 3 Haunted Ridge. Up against what could be Esper Legends. And a Ronan 2. Okay, found a Harvester which we can play. Could also run out a Bank Buster. Which is maybe better since I may end up using Brotherhood's End to deal 3 to each creature. Although if a Fiend shows up, then uh, they can give Ronan an extra point of toughness right away. Okay, opponent's gonna pass instead. So, go for Fable now. So potentially make a bit more mana to ramp towards Chandra. Alright, make disappear, so 
not quite Esper Legends, more of a blue-black control deck, perhaps. Discarding Hidetsugu and Kairi. So it could be a combo deck with Explosive Singularity, who knows. For now, could take out Arona with Brotherhood's End, play Tapland. That seems reasonable. This way, if we pick up an Invoke Despair next turn, we can cast it, as opposed to being stuck with a tap land. Opponent's gonna loot. And I go for the throw, discard it. Okay. So, still not sure if our opponent's just two colors or if they're playing a third one. Fairy Vandal. Also, would have been pretty good with Rona. So, there will be more creatures for us to potentially take out. Now. Probably start with Fable, so we can pay for Make Disappear. And then I can decide if I want to Harvest or Attack for 4, or just draw with a Bank Buster to maybe hit my Land Drops for Chandra. Although the presence of Counter Spells is going to make it trickier to resolve Chandra. I think we still just draw with a Bank Buster here. Go for the throat number 2, takes out our Shaman. And at least Bank Buster is effective against an opponent who's sitting back on counter spells. So, what do we discard, if anything? Harvester, crewing Bank Buster could be nice. Go for the throat and answer to Fairy Vandal, although it's not the biggest threat right now. So maybe I do discard both Go for the Throat and a Land, in the hopes of finding more action, and I'm unlikely to tap out for Chandra this turn anyway. Alright, cut down a cheaper answer than go for the third, I suppose. So I could draw with Bank Buster, or we could try and attack for four. Given our opponent's main removals go for the throats, our Bank Buster would survive. So maybe that's worth a shot. And then the timing of cutdown is also somewhat tricky. Could do it end of my turn. Could do it in the opponent's upkeep. Don't want to do it when the opponent can potentially grow the Vandal out of range. But I guess even a 2-3 would die to cutdown, so I'll let them draw. And sure, we'll cut down now. That works. Abandon Mire, a way of getting back Chandra as well. So we've got options. Maybe start by crewing Bankbuster and attacking for four, and then play Chandra second main. Put in time to make disappear. Okay. The next turn can maybe channel Abandoned Mire, still have some mana left over. And of course copying our harvesters always great value. So let's do that. Get in for seven. And an Artai Resurrected. Gonna jump in front, maybe kill the Bank Buster. Sure. Could just tap out for another Fable. Could uh, channel Abandoned Mire. I guess we'll just play another Fable. Doesn't seem like our opponent's necessarily playing any sweepers. And I'll keep Cliffs in hand to discard either the Blood Tokens or the second chapter. Archpriests, okay. So we can maybe chump Artai to prevent them from getting back a Hidatsugu from the graveyard. And then a Reflection plus Harvester should take care of the Archpriest pretty easily. So double cliffs can go. And go for the throat now, also an option. Mm, 
get in for three. I suppose I'll play the lane so we can both channel and go for the throat here. Invasion of Amoncat to make me discard. Fair enough. So now just discard, go for the throat, and hang on to Abandon Mire for Chandra. Opponent can transform the invasion right away, but that should be fine. They can copy a creature here. Hidetsugo and Kairi. So opponent seems to be just blue-black, so don't expect an explosive singularity out of nowhere. And then they both need to answer Chandra, which can deal 5 directly, as well as the Reflection plus Harvester combo. Okay, fair enough, another invasion, I guess, will empty my hand. So no point in getting back Chandra now. Could maybe use a Blood Token here, in case I find an Instant Speed Removal spell I can still cast. Alright, Breach would have been a nice play next turn, so... Could keep digging. One more... All right, all land can go. And a Warcrafting, also a pretty clean solution here. So if they don't have anything too powerful on top, this will just end the game as we can attack for five. And just a land, all right. And that does it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Cut down into Bankbuster. Let's see what we're up against. Okay, soldiers. Officer could be worth taking out. I'll tap out for Bankbuster before Athalia comes down. And then next turn we could Edict it. There's Thalia. Let's take that out. Could wait for them to cast something, but if they have the instant speed token maker, then uh, I could regret it, so let's just go for it now. The only downside is their opponent having another Thalia here, but that would also be mana inefficient unless they have a one drop. Right, Sky Strike without two more soldiers. So now is a good time for Warcrafting, maybe hit a land drop with it. And then this Invoke Despair could be great. So yeah, on the play makes Thalia a lot less effective. And now we're just running away with Invoke Despair into another Invoke Despair potentially. Unless our opponent's packing some counter spells, which they don't seem to be. Opponent maybe holding up the uh, reinforcements now. That's fine. We can kind of pivot, go with Fable, maybe draw with Bankbuster. Could do that main phase to hit my land drop. Opponent's got a Soaring City instead. That's fine. Thalia is not quite as effective anymore. So what do we get rid of? Breach may not be necessary this game. And maybe a big score can go as well, although it's pretty nice with Chandra. So let's get rid of Fable. And this turn we can cut down. And then still potentially big score or draw with Bankbuster and cut down. Opponents out of action, and yeah, they concede, get to play Chandra next turn, and then double Invoke Despair is going to end the game very quickly. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Good uh, Harvester on two. Good in pretty much any matchup. 
and then Chandra to work towards in the late game. Opponent an Esper deck, looks like Esper Legends with Athalia, which is very effective against our deck, but luckily we have the Harvester which we can still play out here. That can answer Athalia. And a second Harvester can maybe even kill a Rafine at 4 toughness. So in fact if they play Rafine, I may just go Harvester and then take out Rafine, pay the Ward 1. And let Thalia go unchecked for a turn. And then second Harvester can hopefully deal with Thalia. And then we can resume casting our non-creature spells. The Esper Legends deck can come out of the gates pretty quickly. Harata Drabic gives the opponent a bit more staying power now. So we'll have to take that out with Harvester first. But let's read it carefully so it has Ward 2. And then whenever another legendary creature dies, they get to make a token that's a copy. So yeah, we want to handle Rata Drabic first. If I go for Brotherhood's End, our opponent still gets a backup Thalia. So I guess what I could also do is just Harvester Thalia, and then Brotherhood's End to wipe the board. And that would get the job done, letting me keep go for the Throat. That's maybe okay. Okay, so the board is clear now. Can answer their next legendary creature, and then double Chandra is looking good. Rona. Pretty good in the new Legends deck. Cut down the perfect answer, however. Still have the blood tokens to maybe improve my hands, but for now I don't really see a need to discard anything. is going to pass. Eclipse is stamped, sadly. Opponent doing nothing, so their hand might have a few removal spells. The Dawn Sky is not bad. So how do we want to handle it? Maybe just go for the throat now, and then we can maybe finish off whatever it uh, puts on the battlefield, as opposed to Wait until we can Chandra, and then copy go for the throat by making mana, but there's only one creature on the battlefield right now. And our opponent found a Danik. Alright, that can still provide a bit of value from the graveyard. But that's where it's gonna go here. Three to Danik, three to the opponents. And then next turn, Chandra can go digging for an Invoke Despair, and double Invoke Despair is pretty difficult to recover from. Alright, our tie in answer to Chandra, but at least we got a bit of value out of it, and we still get to draw. And Breach the Multiverse now might be better, although we can maybe copy Breach with Chandra, so that seems worth a shot. Minus on air tie. War ends today. I'll keep land in hand since we already have seven mana in play in case we need to use our blood tokens if something goes wrong with breach. If Thalia shows up, we can still uh, pay for it. All right, another air tie. Fair enough. At least we're up a card in the exchange. But now we don't get to copy breach, which I was hoping for. And I could use a blood token, discard land now. So third time's the charm, I guess. Opponent does get a couple more Denix in their graveyard, that's a little awkward. What do we get? Could get the Dawn Sky. That's probably our best option here. Could also go with Rona, which we can transform pretty easily. And that can uh, be a pretty quick win condition. 
opponent's going to be putting some 3-2s on the battlefield with flying, so maybe just getting a 5-4 flyer to protect against those is best. And then Chandra can once again minus. And then next turn a uh, copied Warcrafting could be effective. We'll go for the throat kills Dawn Sky. Okay. And Denik makes another appearance. Double Invoke Despair, that's what we were hoping for. So, add some mana. And this may just be game. Bones at three. Can play Fable and Bankbuster. And then next turn Chandra can minus to finish off the opponent. I guess we could have just minused instead of adding mana to begin with, but uh, yeah, this game seems pretty over. Alright, so we got to see our red-black Chandra mid-range deck in action. Chandra definitely all the rage and standard right now, incredibly powerful planeswalker that fits quite nicely in these red-black invoked despair decks. And then if you ever get to copy your Breach the Multiverse, you get to live the dream hopefully. Could also try and include a few more expensive creatures and planeswalkers, so your Breach the Multiverse has a higher hit rate. But as long as you wait until Chandra's in the graveyard, you should be fine. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.